Metal Jesus here, and I am back again with Kelsey. How's it going? It's going pretty well. Why are we here today? So today we're going to be talking about Animal Crossing. It's one of my favorite series. I have a very large collection. I have all the games in English and in Japanese, with just one or two exceptions, um, as well as a bunch of accessories, some weird things you may not have seen. Including this button that I'm wearing. Yeah, these were uh, <laughs> given out um, to GameStop employees when they were promoting New Leaf, so we're the mayor. <laughs> Both of us, apparently. I am looking forward <laughs> to this because you just recently got me into Animal Crossing, so I can't wait to talk about it. Let's take a look. Okay, so you know a secret of mine, and that was I hadn't played Animal Crossing until you and I talked about doing this video. And that was what, two weeks ago? Week two weeks ago. ago. All right. <laughs> and you <laughs> gave me homework. You gave me I homework. Did. Yeah. yeah. And so I went out and I bought Animal Crossing New Leaf for the 3DS, and I've been playing it every single day. Good. That's how, You have to play it every day. You really yeah, do. Yeah. We're going to take a look at the very beginning. That, oh, really? Okay. Yeah. And a lot of people think it started on the GameCube. It didn't. It started on the Nintendo 64 in Japan. Okay. Um, so this is kind of like Animal Crossing Lite. Hmm. Um, this is called Dobutsu no Mori. It uh, means animal forest. That's what they call it in Japan rather okay. than Animal Crossing. It's not really much of a big difference, but uh, this was released in 2001, right before the GameCube released. So oh, so it was a late release. It was a very late release, which okay. is why we didn't get it in America until okay. the GameCube. And also, this was a uh, disk drive planned game. Really? It was, it was supposed to use the internal clock of the disk drive. Ah. So there you go. So uh, my copy is like pretty much brand new, but it came with these cute little stickers to like you know write your name on it and that kind of stuff. Oh. And then a memory card, which you'll see that they also carried that over into the uh, GameCube I, release. Of course, right? Huh. This, because it's on a Nintendo 64 cartridge, it's definitely missing some things that they wanted to include. And then of course they did. For space. With, with the GameCube right. one. So um, hmm. there wasn't, well, you know him, Tortimer, you know him as the guy on the island. That oh. used to be the mayor of the town. Oh, the oh, he mentions that, that actually. Yeah. yeah when so he's retired in New Leaf. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, but he's not in this game. Oh. As well as it, a couple other characters are omitted and just random things. So there's there's a lot missing from this. Still really cute, but of course it's so text heavy that this is not a game you can play if you don't no Japanese. fluently yeah. know Japanese. Hmm. Um, so anyways, then we got the American uh, port here um, and actually they had added some stuff when they ported it over here and the localization team at the treehouse nintendo did such an impressive job with this taking out the japanese references and putting in more relevant american mm. holidays like the fourth of july and okay. that kind of stuff that wasn't in the japanese one now let me ask you one of the things that really struck me about this game is the humor mm -hmm. and, and like the the characters in your town they have such personality they have their own slang and yeah so is, was that from the very beginning yep Okay. So they basically, you'll sort of know that, notice this if you play it more and more often. Um, there are a bunch of different personality types, okay. and they kind of, if you play it for like 400 hours, like, like some, do, yeah, <laughs> you you will eventually hear repeats, and you'll be like, hey, that guy just said that over okay. there, but he just used substituted a different word. I you see. know, yeah. said he he lives for pear gelato instead of you know apple pie or whatever okay so huh. i don't know um so anyways the localization team did such a fantastic job with this that they actually reported it back over to japan and that's this though it's no more plus oh okay. um this had e-reader support and it also had game boy advance support huh. so there was an island in the first one but it was like on your game boy advance it was just like little walking around on your <laughs> so people have mentioned that that the you was it this game where you could unlock like classic nes that games, was the gamecube right? version yeah oh okay. yeah so they um it would actually come with your memory card if i remember correctly it just oh. came with a uh, one or two but then the e-reader cards would uh, supply you with more and i actually have some of the e-reader cards we'll show huh. later but yeah so these came with a memory card just, hmm. just like the uh, original one came with sure, a Nintendo you need 64 it, right? yeah. yeah, it's the smallest GameCube one. It's 59 blocks, so it's pretty small. Um, really, just enough for you to have a town on it. I see. What's really weird about this one is, you know, the GameCube didn't have like a multiplayer online type thing like the rest of these mm -hmm. consoles did. So how they did multiplayer was you would just like give your friend your. GameCube memory card to borrow. Oh, like in the other slot? And something? you put it in slot B, and then you'd go to the train station and you go, I want to go to that town. Huh. And you could walk around their town. Yeah. But, like, usually your friend was either sitting right there with you because 
he, th- he was the, lending you your yeah. memory card, or he like wasn't he was at home. Yeah. Know, but, oh, sure. So it wasn't quite the so same. So it's almost like a not, snapshot at that time. Yeah, you're not huh. interacting, yeah. but there's still cool things you could do. You could write them letters when you were in their town, or leave sure. messages on their bulletin board, plant huh. trees, all that stuff would transfer over wow, to them. So, okay. yeah. Um, then the biggest jump in quality, in my opinion, from an Animal Crossing game to another Animal Crossing, is to Animal Crossing Wild World. Um, on the DS. On the DS, yeah. So this one, obviously now the DS has online multiplayer with Wi-Fi, and you could play with other people online. There was just a lot more to this game. You know, the first game you could have two stories to your house in a basement, and you could change the color of the roof, but this one you could build, you know, additions to it yeah. and that kind of stuff. And it, huh. it ended up just being kind of a better version all around. You could also put patterns on the ground, um, which sounds kind of weird, but I don't know if you saw in my town, I have yeah. like pathways that those are patterns that I made and then I just place them. Oh, on with the like ground. a little graphic editor or something mm-hmm. like that. Oh. Yeah, and there would be people who would take it to the extreme and I'm they'd sure. make like a whole world, like everything was water or there were, huh. they they literally place patterns all over every well, square inch of their town. Again, using the DS and the stylist, and you know, so many games use that to draw and do art. Mm-hmm. That makes total sense. Yeah. yeah. So this this game added a lot. You could also change your hair, and you didn't have to wear that stupid hat like you have to in the GameCube one. There's, you know, it's yeah. just it really made the series uh, feel like a fully polished version huh. of itself. Uh, then we got Animal Crossing City Folk on the Wii. This one was interesting. It didn't really change a whole lot from Wild World. They didn't add a ton. It sounded like they would because, as you can see, there's a city in the background here, and it felt it, when they were advertising it, marketing it, they were like, "Oh yeah, you can go to the city downtown." And I was picturing at the time, like you know, a hub of other sure. players and lots of buildings. It's like six buildings. Oh. And huh, okay. Yeah, it's just it's really not that exciting. Almost just like a different graphic instead of like a house. It's a building, right? Yeah, when there'd be, I mean, you could go into them. They were all businesses, but they were static. Oh. You know, there was like a comedy club and a high-end boutique store, and it wasn't anything like totally mind-blowing. But now the Wii had a much better online experience than the GameCube. So it I did, assume. yeah, and uh, there was also it was bundled with this little Wii Speak thing, which of course you can't use anymore because the Wii. Um, support for these games is gone by now Uh, but yeah you could talk to people there's very few Wii games that you could actually talk to people with unlike you know the 360 or whatever Um, so that was cool that was one of them where you could actually really interact with people and the weird thing about this one I thought this was really odd they were really trying to push the me stuff so you could get a makeover and to, make to, yourself to be your me. and be a me. It didn't. It didn't fit. Like it just didn't look right. <laughs> it looked like someone just put a me in the middle of this. Now I'm noticing that for all of these, you have the U.S. and the, the mm-hmm. Japanese version. Is there a reason for that? Like other than just a completionist, you know? <laughs> yeah, and you know, I like I like import games a lot, and there's always a lot of uh, localization differences, like a lot in these games. The, oh, okay. uh, Japanese releases will have things like uh, Boy and Girls Day and like these these holidays that oh, we don't yeah. have in America. Yeah, okay. They're very difficult to play and honestly not really worth it, sure. but um, I just find it interesting to yeah. see the you know see the side by side between yeah, them. Yeah, that's cool. Um, then we have really the best one in this series, which is the newest full Animal Crossing game, and that's New Leaf, that's the one you were playing. Mm-hmm. Um, my favorite thing they added in this one was the customization of the furniture. I was so excited when they announced that. <laughs> because I'm a dork. Uh, (laughs) But this is really cool, and this is where you're finally a mayor, and you can do things like put gardens or statues or like the Eiffel Tower or a lighthouse or whatever in your your town. And now, you mentioned on yours, so she showed me her town, (laughs) and you hadn't turned it on like in a year. Yeah. So you originally were like, oh my god, it's going to be overgrown, it's going to be weeds or whatever, and it wasn't that way because of rules. Yeah, there's a rule that you can set as the mayor, like one thing, and it's things like, oh, the stores will be open later or earlier, or the one that I did is the beautiful town. Um, which means that I can leave my game alone and all my flowers will still be there. And it looked nice. amazing. Like every square inch of your town was completely... With flowers? Yeah. And, <laughs> com- and, and, and organized too. Like they were all like, you know, it wasn't just crazy flowers. You had them all per- perfectly... It's a pattern. Like, yeah. Right? yeah. I may have spent a lot of time on this may have. game. Maybe yeah. just a little bit. Uh, so this one's really, really great. And I would say if you're getting into the series now, you might as well just start with this one. It was it's, very easy to, it's for me cool. to do that. Yeah. I mean, it's cool to see the progression of what they added for each game, but really, I mean, this is just the best one. They also did some cool stuff where they had like DLC furniture 
oh. and stuff like that for this one, which I thought was neat. Which um, makes sense, yeah. Yeah, Japan got like a full 7-Eleven set. They got like vending machines and really? like a Slurpee machine. And 7-Eleven's <laughs> huge in Japan. Huh. Go figure. Oh. Um, but I thought that was really cool. Uh, and beyond that, I mean, it's really, it's really just the most solid one. They this game was announced like four or five years before it came out, which was so frustrating. Oh wow! This was the felt like the longest wait ever, but yeah, huh. now it's been a while. Yeah. Oh, and the really cool thing is they're going to be offering uh, an update for this that's going to allow amiibo card support and amiibo support for this game because there's all those Animal Crossing amiibo cards, which I'll yeah. show in a little bit. Yes. Um. Then they came out with, uh, actually I think this one came first, Amiibo Festival on the Wii U. Um, this is horrible. I, I, you've talked about this on it's, your podcast. Yeah, <laughs> I only own this like as a testament to my obsession. Like It's really not even worth it. Um, and it was in no way, shape, or form worth the $60 I paid for it. I so, mean, it, so it, it's a Wii U game. It's a Wii U game. Imagine Mario Party, but you take out all the mini games and everything that makes it fun. Uh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's horrible. So it's pretty much just like a board game. I would say it's almost kind of like the game of life, but they do all these tedious things with it. Like, you can't just roll the dice. You have to tap your amiibo every single time. Every time you want to roll it. And you have to have amiibos to play. Oh, you can't okay. play without amiibos. Huh. So it's just really like... Does inaccessible it, and it, is it really just to sell like an exclusive amiibo? I assume that is that or is it a common amiibo in there? Well, they eventually released these outside of okay. the, the bundle, but at first it was and you know This was in the middle of the amiibo craze. Sure, so sure. Plenty you of were full on in that. Yeah <laughs> um, But yeah, I really honestly just don't recommend this game hmm. at all The rest of it is good though. They came out with the happy home designer which I thought was going to be kind of a shallow game because it's really just designing things, you know, using the engines from Animal Crossing to N make is this rooms a, and... Does this tie into your main th uh, New Leaf game? No, I wish. Oh, so this is this is completely separate? Yeah, this is oh, separate. Okay. Um, and it's this is really like the first use of the Animal Crossing cards and amiibos and stuff. Okay. It's cool. You design rooms and houses for different villagers and there'll be random ones there but you can also buy these packs of cards to mm. get like a specific one if you want to design their room okay. particularly um, and it gives you this giant arsenal of furniture and ceiling fixtures and rugs and all of that stuff to you work with that, that reminds me of the sims a little bit oh yeah, right? yeah totally okay um and then there's special projects like you have to design a store and a hospital and that kind of thing too yeah, it's too bad it doesn't tie into the the new leaf game well i have a theory okay. i have a theory because this is much more advanced in-depth house designing than was ever available in the other ones for instance you can't hang things from the ceiling in the old ones mm. um and there's just there's a lot more that you can do with the furniture way more pieces of furniture and way more things you can manipulate or ways you hmm. can ma manipulate the furniture so i have a theory that this is kind of like all right they are done with that part of whatever the new yeah. animal crossing is and they're testing it out yeah and they're Makes like, well, sense. might as well just release that as a game in and yeah. of itself. That's my theory. Huh. That's in no way, shape, or form confirmed or even rumored. <laughs> it's just a theory. Um, so that's that's it. Animal Crossing characters. For the games. Yeah, Animal Crossing characters have appeared in Smash Brothers, Mario Kart, other things, yeah. Nintendo Land. But, um, I mean, there hasn't been a ton of actual yeah. games I, yet. But, but they're consistently some of the best-selling games. Oh my uh, gosh, it's so popular. Yeah, yeah. it's amazing. In uh, both Japan and the U.S. Yeah. It's usually like a, you know, one's way more popular in some right. area. But no, Animal Crossing is across the board very, very popular. Okay, so what are we look? Uh, what are we going to look at next? We're going to look at accessories and toys and just random stuff I have, as well as some of the consoles. There were some exclusive limited edition Animal Crossing consoles. Very cool. All right. So I've got a bunch of random accessories and stuff here. Of course, there's all these amiibos that came out. This is just the villager one from the Smash Brothers series, but they didn't put one out for the Animal Crossing amiibo line, so I had to have it. Um, oh, okay. So. In order to be Animal Crossing, it has like this little piece of grass. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah, these ones here see the Smash logo on oh, it. Oh, okay. See, see what sort of noob I am when it comes to these amiibos. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> they're really cute. They're very well designed. They're, I mean, mm -hmm. I think they're worth it for twelve dollar figures. And actually, most of these have gone on sale at this point. And they're pretty cheap because <laughs> um, the Animal Crossing amiibos like aren't really used for anything yet. Mm. They're used for that horrible amiibo festival game, hmm. and that's it um, until New Leaf. 
uh, gets that update. Right. So, I also have all these Amiibo cards. I only brought the first, I have a complete first and second series, but I only brought the first one. Now, the cards are for what? These are also Amiibos. Oh, They're just okay. cards, so they okay. have the same chip in them that you can scan with any of these NFC reader things. Okay. Um, or your Wii U or new 3DS already has it built in. So these are cool. Again, you just use these for Happy Home Designer, and then hmm. in okay. the future when that Animal Crossing New Leaf update comes out. Um, I also want to show off my systems. So this one came out in the US. This is a new 3DS, but not new 3DS XL. Uh, we got very few of these. We didn't get them by themselves. We only got them in bundles. Oh, this isn't the big one. Right. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. So, you know, much smaller. And the really cool thing about this is the detachable face plates. This actually isn't the one that came with it. It came with two face plates. It's got like Isabel, and then the other one is just kind of like uh, the this is really cool. Though. Yeah. Oh, it's really cool. Yeah, the other one's just kind of like happy home designer themed one. I don't know how to describe it. No, I'm sorry if I if, if I seem <laughs> new to this. So, so you're saying that because the XL doesn't have removable no. face plates. It's only the new 3DS. Mm -hmm. And they pop right off pretty easily. The other ones oh, uh, on the back it's really a screw, cool. but on this it just it just pops right off. But it huh. stays in there pretty pretty nicely. So there was a bunch of games that that potentially would have all these like. The bundles came with the face plates, and then the face plates in Japan are sold separately. I had to import this. They don't actually sell them. In Dude, the I'd be all over those face plates. Yeah, awesome. I have I have a couple. Um, hmm. I honestly have more than I need because like what I'm not really accessorizing my DS to match my outfit or anything. So, you know. <laughs> I totally would. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then this was the one that came with New Leaf, and of course because I'm crazy, you know, it comes with a download, and I'm like, no way, I have to get a physical copy. Um, so yeah, this one's really cool. A lot of people call this the Pop Tart. Kind of looks like a it does a Pop Tart, doesn't it? Is, is this your main working one? Well, I use my new 3DS now, but oh. this was the one I used. I mean, it's it's pretty beat up. You can tell this is loved. And then since we were talking about Amiibo cards, there were cards before that. These are the e-reader cards that were used with the GameCube wow. version. They would have things on them like patterns. There's you know, a ton. Could, yeah, I have so many. I wish I had like a pack I could open here for you guys, that'd be cool. Wow. And then like the town tune um, would just be like a little jingle that would play when you'd walk through a door or something huh. like that. Um, but these were these were ones that, you know, they figured out how to do the a Zelda song or something that you could yeah. have in your town. So um, yeah, they, these were cool. They weren't, I mean, they weren't like crazy popular. It's just kind of a random, you know, if you really wanted to spend. Well, the e-reader wasn't really that popular here, e Exactly, right? yeah. yeah. Um, but they're, I mean, I really like them. I think it's just a neat thing to, yeah, totally. to have and to use with that. Oh, and more NES games. Ah, uh, that, that would be cool. Yeah. Um, so then I also have, I want to show off these guidebooks just because they're so freaking enormous. This thing is, a yeah, look at the size of that. that this looks like this, a phone book. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a Japanese uh, Happy Home Designer one. And I had to have it. Obviously, I can't really read that much Japanese, but if you look through here, it's got every single piece of furniture and also like um, like sample rooms for every character in the game. So I would draw some inspiration from this. Yeah. Like you'd scan one of these little amiibo cards, and then you'd be like, okay, well that's what someone else designed for that guy's room. Yeah. Maybe I can do something. Oh, that's that's cool. cool. Um, and this was the new leaf one. It's a little bit smaller, but I still use this a lot. This had checklists for all the furniture and the bugs and the fossils and that kind of stuff. You still had your notes in the background. Right? I know, yeah, I have some of these like actually checked off because I'm a nerd. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and just, you know, tips and tricks for the game like most guidebooks, but I just, I think these ones are really well done because mm -hmm. they're so, I mean, there's so much to yeah. know in here. Um, I also have some cool Club Nintendo rewards. This one's just like a little DS case. Came with some styluses and I lost two of them, evidently. Um, <laughs> but these were cool. And then another Club Nintendo thing, which was a playing card set huh, for wow. Animal Crossing Wild World. Man, um, you went all in on Animal yeah, Crossing. Yeah, I this really is... did. I know. Um, I also have this sticker. This was just given to me at GameStop. I think it was just a pre-order bonus. I have some stuff from Japan, like this little gachapon little set here. Gachapon? Gachapon. They're like the um, like the vending machines oh, that give you toys. With like the little, uh, yeah, plastic. Yeah. yeah. So it's cute. They're like little puzzle pieces you put together and huh. it comes with like a little piece of furniture or outdoor thing and you can, they're 
they're puzzle pieces. You can lock a bunch of them together, which is cute. Um, and this little stamp set. Yeah, this just weird stuff. And then one of the most interesting things. This is a pen they gave out at E3 for uh, when, Nintendo Land. This was the, E3 2012. My God, so yeah. much. And then you have a guy <laughs> around the corner there. Oh, I do. Yeah. There's also a bunch of plushies. There's way more merchandise in Japan than what I have here. Um, but all of it's like, not all of it, but most of it's like so tiny that I'd be like, look at all these keychains I have. So it's, <laughs> it's not all that interesting, but, um, yeah, there's a lot. I mean, it's wow. a very popular series. So there's been a whole lot of random toys and, and stuff. With it's it. cool. It's cool. And I'm, I have to say, I'm glad to be in the universe because again, well, again, what I like about it is that I can jump in and put as much time as I want. Or, or a little, little time. Yeah. Or a little time. Like I can just hop in if I have five, ten minutes, and you know, earn some money or you know, or readjust my town. It's actually pretty cool. So you're enjoying it? Oh yeah, totally, totally. And I, I mean, I will say this is definitely not for everybody. I know many people who have played for five days and they're just like, why am I doing chores? This is not. And I would say you have to get past that point because you know the game doesn't. You don't have any money in the beginning. You're right. just you're just trying to pay off your house. But once you do that, and also you have a little bit of money, and also the uh, the island opens up. That mm -hmm. was when it was really. Especially when I come back with a whole bunch of stuff and, and I make all this money, I'm like, ooh, yeah, yeah. And I then you end up spend going, it. Yeah. End up going like a hundred <laughs> times. The other cool thing is it's a really good multiplayer game. You guys can mm. do things together. You can fish together. You can plant flowers together. All these things. I mean. So if you don't have friends who are playing, go join like an Animal Crossing forum of some mm -hmm. sort or a Facebook group or something. There's plenty of them out there and people are still definitely hmm. playing. I'll have to do that. Um, and that'll open the doors a lot like, hey, I really need this piece of furniture. Can I trade somebody or, you know, because it doesn't all come through your town at once. Or like so. you, uh, when, when she brought over her 3DS, how much money do you have? I think like two million bills or something like that. <laughs> oh my God. That's not even that much in comparison to like, I know people who have like 90 million. So. Oh my God. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> that's awesome. So, well, thanks very much for showing your collection. It's, it's, it's inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> inspiring. Or, or like weird, it's, you know. <laughs> Obsessive, but I wasn't going to say. No, no, we all have our obsessions, so. <laughs> That's true. That's very cool. All right, so where can people find you on the internet? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Kels Lewin, or you can follow my podcast at Game Blitz Show. It's also on iTunes and Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube even now. So all of that fun stuff. Definitely check it out. All right, guys, thanks very much for watching my channel. Thank you for subscribing, and take care. That's what I love about having Kelsey on my channel. It's because her game collection is just so different than mine. You know, there's 40 years worth of video games and I'm always learning something new and I love sharing it with you guys. So definitely be subscribed to my channel. I release two new videos every single week. And yes, Kelsey's definitely coming back. All right guys, thanks for watching.